Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the big metal detecting podcast. Now, uh, I'm, apologies for being late. Uh, Luke, unfortunately, can't get any reception uh, where he is, Wi-Fi where he is, to be able to do the show tonight. And uh, the podcast also died a death because I can't get my speaker account to um, communicate with Gary. So I apologize uh, for not being able to do that. I'm going to be waffling for a few minutes. Wow, Gary, it's actually working. I found it. <laughs> uh, we are live. So that's that's a good thing. So tonight's going to be a little bit different than normal show. Obviously, Luke's not here to uh, produce it. Uh, but also, um, I'm not going to be able to bring things up uh, for, for you to look at. Well, I, I think I might be able to. If you bear with me, I'll be able to ho hopefully do that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, obviously, thank you to Gary Cook for coming on tonight. Um, first and foremost, everybody, uh, there's, there's a lot of things going on at the moment. Uh, COVID-19, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, some of the things that are, uh, they're not particularly nice. Let's let's be honest. Is a lot of uh, misinformation coming out from the government. Um, not from the government. There's a lot of misinformation coming out. The government information comes out on a daily basis, and uh, we we hope that's that's the correct information. Um. There are multiple news articles this week. Uh, one of the major articles was actually concerning uh, the British Museum says that uh, in the last year, metal detectorist, that is us who are watching, have... Let me share this screen. So you should be seeing... Uh, an image saying about the British Museum says metal detectorists have found 1,311 treasures this year. A rare 1,100 uh, year old brooch from Norfolk among them treasures. Uh, it goes on to, to basically give metal detectorists the, the good things that we deserve, the good words that we deserve, because let's face it, there's been a lot of bad press recently, and this article, it does help a lot in that respect. Um, Hell of a lot of things, and I know a lot of people listening and watching uh, will will have actually uh, sent things to the uh, the the British Museum, to the Fines Liaison Officers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, kudos and to each and every one of you for that. And now I'm popping onto the archaeology and metal detecting. With Gary, obviously, I'm talking to you. I know you're there, yeah. and you can oh, see yeah. the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything coming up as I want it to at the moment should be the archaeology and metal detecting magazine. Yeah, everything's ever excellent. Yeah. It works. There. So anyway, uh, the education page again. Obviously, being in the situation we are, a lot of people self isolating a lot, and obviously schools closing currently. Um, there's going to be a point where your kids get bored. So, if you would like to pop onto the education uh, page on the www.archmdmag.com, you will see lots of things. Obviously, some of the things are, are going to be. Um, actually interactive in schools and such like. So ignore them for the time being, but keep them in mind of future. You've got metal detecting for beginners, direct links to uh, the, the sites for the younger generation of metal detectorists. But here you can see downloadable activity packs. Now there's some great things, some great resources there. Just click on them and you've got all sorts going on uh, that you know you can print off, give the kids to play with, jigsaws, all sorts there you can see. And, uh, you know, your kids are going to have a merry time with that. There's also historical colouring books. Uh, carry on down. We've got uh, online learning sources as well. I've got more to add to that in the next day or two. But, again, as you can see on this website, the Open uh, Culture, I think it's called. Um, if it comes up, there we go. Open Culture. Multiple links to courses in archaeology and such like, to lectures, to books, to audio books, movies, absolutely all sorts so please keep that in mind you can find them as i say directly through the archaeology and metal detecting magazine uh website uh in the last week we've had a number of articles produced i've been able to while i've been doing not much um first thing you can see is a free pdf which is a complete guide to metal det uh, magnet fishing which was put together by drastic g mr gareth Breyer. so if you just click on, on the image, it'll take you straight to the PDF to learn more about magnet fishing. Uh, following on from that, 
uh, we had a research request of a carved cross from Palestine. I think it's quite lovely, really. Uh, Abu Deeb, who's in the Palestine, found this cross and he was wondering what it was. Um, and I've gone into a bit of a explanation from the Encyclopedia Britannica about what the cross actually symbolizes and why. Following on again, uh, Leroy Brown had the bronze axe head he discovered in Cheshire. Uh, so he sent the information over and that was also included on the portable antiquity scheme. Next up, an unknown ivory item which was found uh, beneath the floorboards of an old church in Cheshire and the lady wished to know more about that. One thing she did actually give me was the dimensions of it, but uh, according to Carl McSmith, could it possibly be a cane or a part of a cane? Rushing through these now because I want to speak to uh, to Gary. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm <laughs> a fantastic article uh, that, well, I, I put together an article, but the, the images and the story behind the image is absolutely fantastic. These are the World War One artifacts with this was discovered in Salonica by Giannis. Oh, here we go. Caria Giorgio, apologies if you're listening and I've <laughs> said that wrong. Um, this image at the top, as you can see, uh, this is a, um, where is it? Where is it? It's a dog tag, basically, of a Greek Cretan soldier who was killed when getting out of his trench. He actually discovered this uh, two meters in front of the trench and his name was Ionis Oikonomakis, and he actually found the family in Crete, and he gave them the found, the find. Now, um, there's lots more things there you can go through. With his, you can find his uh, World War relic hunting page on Facebook, and some of the finds he's getting are absolutely phenomenal, as you can yeah. see, all military related. Now, the story behind this is uh, he lives in Salonica, as I said, and the battle battle of Skradiligan was a two-day battle which took place uh, in that area located northeast of Mount Pieco, which is the north northwest of Thessalonica. Thessalonica is the modern-day name. On May 29, 1918, on the Macedonian front of the World War I, the battle was the first large-scale employment of German troops of the Army of National Defence. Greece had joined the United War in the summer of 18, 1917 on the front and resulted in the capture of the heavily fortified Bulgarian positions. So, as I say, uh, some, a fantastic little article, that. Uh, not because of my words, but because of the, the images and especially the story behind the return of the dog tags. Uh, and one that's gone on today and will be going on the Archaeology and Metal Detective Magazine Facebook page tonight is this lovely little 1851 US officer soldier's sword belt plate, which was discovered by Jeff in the USA in Asheville, Virginia. So again, thank you to everybody who sent yeah. things in. Uh, there'll be a lot more uh, coming in the coming days. Obviously, with with time off work, I'll be able to uh, catch up on the backlog of things. And if anybody does want anything put on the website, please feel free to to contact myself uh, or Luke, and we'll get that sorted. Um, a bit of bad news, obviously, this week is that the um, Detectable spring detectable has been postponed and the summer detectable has been cancelled for the foreseeable future. Now, Mark Betch has agreed to, well, he's asked and we've agreed to bring him on on a special show on Sunday night. It's only going to be a 15 minute or so show, and that's just to, to um, explain verbally um, instead of obviously written and reading the words. Mark and will speak to you personally to give all the information about uh, obviously what's gone on and why. Um, and we all know why, but let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, so that's on Sunday around, well, hopefully at eight o'clock. Uh, again, apologies, I've not been able to get the, um, the podcast working again for the second week in a row. I'm going to have to work on that in the next week. Last week was sound issues. This week was connection with Gary. So, Gary, good evening. Hi. Are you well? Thank you, Dave. Yes, very well. Oh, thank good. you. All I'm, things considered, I'm, I'm, with what we're going through in the world at the moment, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing okay. As, as people can see, I'm flicking around at the moment. I'm trying to actually get you up as the main picture, so uh, I don't oh, know how. You, you, don't, you don't want me as the main picture, seriously. Let's try that. Oh, there he is. There he <laughs> oh, is. No. I've got him up. 
uh, <laughs> this is all new to me. It's it, as I say, it's always Luke that deals with this side of things. So uh, I'm uh, right. I, I apologise for not being able to uh, to to suss it right. So uh, we're in there you go. Territory, territory, then, mate. Are we? You, you've actually seen me try to shoot myself several times in the last 15 or so minutes, haven't you? <laughs> You're doing a better job than me, mate, because I'm, I'm. it's me. Honestly, computers hate me. And any, I only have to look at the computer and it'll blow up. So <laughs> that's, what I got my, yeah. that's what I'm married to Lisa for. She does all of that. I tell you, no, nobody would get booked in on the Rodney Cook if it wasn't for Lisa, because I would just destroy any computer I looked at. So, <laughs> oh, hey, Lisa. <laughs> I'm useless at anything like that. You ask for my friends, I'm, I'm rubbish at it. I'm rubbish. <laughs> Do you know, I've actually learned, therefore, by by playing just a minute ago, uh, playing around with what we've done, I've actually been uh, screen well, uh, downloading some of your images before the show mm -hmm. of some of your finds that you've discovered in uh, the last few months, to be honest. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. And you've, yeah. you've had some absolutely stunning things. Uh, fair play. You, you keep popping up uh, on Facebook, <laughs> and obviously we share all your images of what you've you shared and you, you come onto the group and what have you. And well, yeah. we, we can't um, thank you enough for that because we love to see what everybody's finding and you've had a you've had a scintillating start to the year. Well, yeah, um, I, I detect mainly with a couple of friends, but mainly with a very, very close mate of mine called Steve Murty. Um, and he is, you know, he's a fantastic mate. I've known him for a long time and we've detected together for a long time um and he and myself we gained a new permission um probably 18 months ago i suppose now and we it's a huge farm and it's uh, a massive area and we was we're slowly and we're not i wouldn't say methodically but we're, we're slowly working our way around the fields and this this particular farmer has land not all in one place it's stretched over a, a, a quite a you know a few miles apart and we've been working our way around it and we've we've come across an area um that is actually producing quite a lot of good stuff and um, we've been concentrating our efforts quite a lot on this one particular uh acreage of land that we have that belongs to this farmer and it as i say we we've been both of us have been astounded at some of the things that we've been pulling out the ground. Um, you know, we I had a a, a Bronze Age um, axe head uh, just before Christmas, um, which was an amazing find, a Palstave axe head. Um, and Steve found um, in another part of the site, uh, I've never even knew they existed, but it was a, a socketed hammer, a Bronze Age hammer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and lots of Roman coins and, and, and bits and pieces. And I think not a lot of medievals coming out of the site, but, but the, the Roman finds um, especially have been incredible condition. You know, I've, I've never had a, a consistent run of Roman coins in such amazing condition. The ground is so kind to the, to the bronze coins, especially that we're finding on this particular site. And it's, it's, it's an amount of brooches and, um, just a just a lot of different things really um oh that was the seal yeah that was last sunday um that has actually been identified as a pelican in piety and um, what i was told in, and, and and it reads uh pelican of i am the pelican of god or something it reads around the edge um and it's apparently in medieval times um when the pelican couldn't feed its young it would peck itself and bleed and feed its young on its own blood um almost self-harm but much like we're going to end up doing ourselves sure. <laughs> yeah well we could end up like that couldn't we um but that was last sunday and uh, yeah that's the i think i might have it upside down i'm not too sure with seals it, those aren't really my speciality I, I i look at it and i think how do people How, how's that <laughs> yeah that, that, that yeah, your guess is as good as mine, mate, to be honest with you, because yeah, I've been yeah. told it looks like a ship, you know, how that That's, looks I, like I thought it was a ship. I really did think it was a ship myself. Yeah. Uh, I think the arrows here, there's the front, there's the bow, there's some people in it, and there's the um, the mast, the not the mast, the, uh, uh, yeah, the mast yeah. with the, uh, the thing on. And a, that's, a very, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Exactly, but a very kind Facebook user sent me a link um to one exactly the same on paz and it's actually as they say a pelican in piety and uh and, and, nah, and, and 
I can yeah. see now. I can see there's the birds in the nest, and there's the uh, the birds on there. Bingo, yeah, yeah, there's the head that, yeah. and the body. Makes perfect. And the pelican sense. is is feeding feeding its young, its own. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's its own its own body almost. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And it's quite common. You, it's Harry, quite you a, could have found you could have found a, a two in one. You could have found the ship one and the pelican. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's always that. And if you read the lettering backwards, it spells something else. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, have you seen but the, no, it's, it's, you're summon a demon if you say it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a bit like that record, isn't it? Which is meant to read um what is it? A, 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 isn't it a Beatles record that they're meant to say John is dead or something if you play it like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which he is. <laughs> well, he is now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, no, we've had some. You know, I've I've had a. Yeah. So, oh, there's some Roman brooches uh, from the site as well. Um, yeah, we, it's it's proving to be an exceptionally. Um, yeah, uh, there, you can see the quality of some of the coins yeah, that have come out. Stunning. Yeah, and, and some of them are even better condition than that. Believe it or not. Yeah. You know. Um, and now, that was a fabulous find with the pin intact. Oh, as well. yeah, that and that's a, a Latane brooch as well, um, which is an earlier one, you know, and a Celtic brooch. And that was, um, oh, that was a, those hammers I found up in Lincolnshire. On All a, right. On a, yeah, that was um, a Jolly Boys outing. Um, I with, remember it. I remember it. You didn't have the weather, a, though. <laughs> no, we didn't. There was a group of friends um, from the club, and there was also, um, Sid Perry and Phil Frag Hill, uh, good two very very good friends of mine, um, and there was us from from the Trowbridge Club that I belong to, a group of mates, and we all went up in minibuses and met Phil and Sid up there, and um, we had a great weekend. We hired some some cottages, and the farmer allowed us to metal detect on his farm, and it was basically a great weekend. You know, we had a few beers in the evening and a couple of nice meals um and we all stayed on this on the farm the great thing is the farmer not only allowed us to metal detect but he had holiday cottages on his farm as well yeah. and uh, very kind that is um an exceptionally good find that is um that was absolutely i was a gog at that one gary well they i've like, got some flint ones myself but when i saw that they're like head, uh, chicken teeth apparently um bronze uh, arrowheads which is the crossover between when they were still using flint but moving over to metal yeah um and then apparently so i've been told there's not very many of the flow has told me that there's not very many of those um been found so he was ex very excited about that and, and, that looks, and my well, image is in no my image is in no way in the right context. No, it's all right. <laughs> they decided to have a mind of their own, just like everything else tonight. That's all right. That's a Saxon ski at the skeet or skiata mm. that I found uh, at the new site as well. Which um, the other one, other side is that one. That's it. You've got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, I have been amazed at how many great finds have been coming off of this this new site of ours. As I say, we've had the permission for nearly eighteen months. Yeah. Um, but circumstances have been that we crops have dictated that uh, that we haven't been able to um, to get onto the site as often as we'd like, and and now we can actually get onto that. Oh, that wasn't actually my find. Um, that was one I put up as a comparison. To the ah, one right. I do apologise. Um, yeah. Well, reason we'll being is that uh, that's a that one that, is, that's um, this this is the one I'm trying to get to. I don't know what it is, and you haven't actually got a um, an well, explanation that, or description. It's a Roman brooch. It's, right. it's a Roman brooch. With, with, uh, it's missing, obviously, the... Um, the, the part here, yeah. Yeah, it's missing. The, the catch plate has been flattened over the years, yeah. and, it, and it is missing. Um, oh, you've gone. Oh, there you go. There, so you can see it there, and it would have had a, a bar across the top yeah. with where the, the spring would have been, which the pin would have attached to, uh, which yeah. has obviously been long since gone. Um, but it is, it's a, you know... It's it's a great find. The one before it was actually a uh, a lovely little find. That one that is a military knee brooch they call it, um, and that again complete and it's in an amazing condition. Absolutely fantastic. It is. Condition. It is stunning. Yeah, it and is. it's got some beautiful little uh, 
all these bits in it you know it's all you can see it's all perfect it's uh mm. quite astounding how, how it's actually survived in, in the soil in condition it must be something to do with the soil and maybe this the area hasn't been sprayed with chemicals you know since the 50s and 60s where they used to put yeah. real powerful you know chemicals on the on the, um insecticides and things onto the fields that would destroy bronze coins and things mm. you know um we've as I say, been exceptionally lucky up there. Um, every time we go up there, we usually find a few Roman coins and a few bits and pieces. And it's it's a great site. Um, and hopefully, weather permitting, um, and we're not on sort of like UK lockdown, me and Steve would probably be back up there on Sunday. But what a great hobby to self-isolate. You know, we could ask Well, better, could it we? is. I mean, you know, that, that, that brings us to the question what happens now for metal detectorists when we call self isolation self isolation can we go into a field i mean what, you know yeah. a lot of people live alongside fields a lot of people are landowners themselves who metal detect their own land but can we actually physically ourselves go into a, a field and you know if the police or someone of consequence pass us are we gonna are we gonna get well it's not at that complete place yet but what happens? Do we want to go out metal detecting? I, I yes, think, we do. Of course we do. And um, th I think if you're sensible, I think what they're look they're probably going to mean is if you're sensible. You know, if you if you're showing signs of the um, of this of this uh, COVID nineteen, and um, then then self isolate, stay indoors. If uh -huh. but if if you know if if you if you if you're not showing signs, but we're on some form of lockdown in the future we're not there yet but it but i i personally think that eventually it will happen you know, certainly in london to start with it will happen um if it follows the model that has been happening in other countries then then yes we will eventually have some form of lockdown but i think they're going to be more worried about mass gatherings of people in cities and towns if if if, if me and steve are in the land rover heading to the farm and we see a policeman and he says you know what are you doing well we're going to the farm two blokes in the middle of a field we could spend the whole day in that that particular site and not see another human being all day yeah we're not going to be spreading the virus in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere with with the nearest house three miles away um and then we go straight home you know i can't see them i think they're going to be more concerned about people in pubs and in, in and things you know and people getting together in towns and spreading it that way i think you know obviously if, if you're on lockdown and you and they say categorically you don't go out then you don't go out you have to do you have to abide by the law um but at the moment it, 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 a couple of guys in a in a field metal detecting are we call, are we spreading the virus no not really i don't think so personally well then there's the question gary Obviously, as I said before, Mark Betch has uh, announced that he's, yeah. he's cancelled uh, the well postponed ca the spring detectable, cancelled summer detectable. Mm. Things could progress. This could end up hitting the Rodney Cup Memorial Rally, which well, we'll yeah, come on I, more lately. But we've got these smaller rallies. It was still promoting, and you know, still propose, promoting up to 60, 50, 60 people. Yeah, is um, that is personally? I wouldn't attend. And a lot, a lot of people won't attend. Yeah, but I, I know a lot. Is that right? Well, I don't. First of all, I want to say uh, well done to Mark. He's a very close mate of mine, Mark Betcher. And if he's watching, hello, Mark. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him a long time, and um, and I got a lot of respect and time from him. I've, and I've learned a lot, and he's helped me a lot with the Rodney Cook in the past. So a huge thank you to Mark. And I personally want to say to him, you know, gutted about about losing the two. Uh, early detectables in the year um and i was looking forward to both of them um but in my honest opinion he has made completely the right call and i will back him 100 percent on that and he has absolutely 100 percent called it right and you have to look at the bigger picture here you know this is a worldwide pandemic and it is causing deaths among the old the ill and those with underlying health issues it is going to get worse before it's going to get better. And the prime minister said tonight he's hoping, only hoping that there's a possibility if we all pull together and do our bit, we could all be seeing light at the end of the tunnel in around 12 weeks. 
Mm. We don't know that. He's only speculating. Now, as far as group gatherings, the government are telling us every day, avoid large gatherings of people, do not go in pubs, do not go in bars, do not go in restaurants, avoid any contact with other people, work from home and stay at home and go, only go out where it's necessary to do so, i.e. go to the supermarket for, for groceries or go to the pharmacy or, or go to the doctors. And, you know, so to answer your question about metal detecting group digs, I personally, like you, wouldn't go. Um, I know it's, it's a free country and we all have the right to do exactly what we want unless told otherwise by the government and it's that they turn it into sort of some form of martial law. Um, do I agree with these digs being held? Well, I don't want to put the, you know, I, I, I don't want to be seen to be going against group digs because it's each to their own. I, on a personal, my personal feeling would be if they're still being held, I, I wouldn't go um, only because I'm being told to stay away from group, uh, you know, mass gatherings of 10 plus. Personally, I think, you know, eventually it's going to get to the point where it will be, I don't know, you can't really say against the law, but will be in some form of lockdown and they will, their hands will be, will be forced. Until that happens, people still go into pubs. So that's wrong. So if people still go into metal detecting events, one day events. Is it right? Is it wrong? Well, it's up to the individual at the end of the day. And we all have a choice. The dig organizers, is their, most of them, it's their livelihood. Some of them don't have another job. So is it wrong for them to lose their businesses because of this virus? Well, there's going to be a lot of businesses losing their like people losing their livelihoods and companies going bust because of this virus. So it, I, I would say it's personal choice at the moment until such time as it's been removed from that. But as it is personally, no, I wouldn't go, mate. No, no definitely not. So what happens next? You know, what do we do? I think we're all in a, a position where mm. it's difficult for each and every one of us. And I know I, I have my own health issues. I know multiple other people who've got their own health issues and I'm sure they'll make the decision not to do anything so in the meantime you know what what can we do i mean obviously i've i've shown you these the educational area on the website for people to 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 have a play on there's all sorts of stuff going to be added that in the coming days for obvious mm. reasons to keep people from boredom um but hey yeah. what else can we do we can go to well, youtube and we can we can watch videos um you know we can look yeah. at the best of rcm from last year there's lots of things you can be doing you can be researching your your sites that you've already got you can start doing a lot lot more research you can even start researching new land possibly you know you can be looking for new areas to to to, to, to try and get permissions on um and you can at the moment nothing's stopping you from from detecting you're in the middle of the field on your own or with at least a, a detecting buddy so you you know it, it it's a perfect hobby if you want to self-isolate they're saying self-isolate and yeah. at the moment, they're not telling us to self-isolate every one of us who have got no signs of the virus. Some of us have had it, and we don't even know. That's what they're saying. I could have had it. I had a bad sore throat and cough, um, you know, just before Christmas. It could have been uh, coronavirus, for all I know, but I'm perfectly okay now. So come Sunday, unless the UK is put into some form of lockdown, um, I will go out metal detecting with Steve, just the two of us. And until such time as I'm told not to, then, then, then I won't. But yeah. if people don't want to go out, and some people, you know, who maybe have the underlying health issues, some people are having, um, you know, the, the over 70s and, and have had these, you know, health health issues, then and they're, just, they're making the decision to stay at home. There's, then the, the, the world's a bigger place now, even indoors. You can go on the internet, you can Skype your friends, you can have chats, you can, like you say, you can go on YouTube and watch metal detecting videos. You can research your sites, you can go on Google Earth and look for crop marks and think, oh, I might see if I can find a farm in that area. You know, um, there's, there's, you know, we've got hundreds of TV channels we can watch now, you know, any time of the day, you can turn the telly on and go through 20 or 30 movies to watch. Well, when I was a kid, I had two channels. 
and most of them were cookery shows. And I had no choice but to watch stupid <laughs> soaps that my mum might cross. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> but nowadays, you can pretty much turn the telly on and catch up TV with eye players and whatever you want to do, you know. So there's there's plenty to keep you occupied. But my, I myself will sit in front of a laptop and do some reading. I'm currently working on a, an article for Treasure Hunting magazine. And if Jules is watching, I am working on it, Jules, I promise. It will be busy. <laughs> okay. Because um, <laughs> he keeps asking me, where's my article, Cookie? Where's my article? And um, I'm trying to get it done in between the Rodney, Rodney Cook stuff um, and work as well, because um, I'm soon going to have a forced work from home because working in sales like I do as a, as a sales UK sales manager um, I've been told by my governor that as of Monday I'm I have to work from home I'm not allowed to go and visit customers anymore so um, it's going to be forced so yeah if I'm going to have a little bit more time on my hands with work on Monday uh, working from home and I have to be a little bit more self-disciplined obviously when you're at home you do that. Uh, I'm even, yes, me of all people, the, the fat person, I'm even looking at, um, well, I've started to, today I've been exercising, which is very out of the ordinary. Even took the dogs for a walk. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> so, uh, I've um, I've got to put some effort into that. You know, I've done silly things. I've put, I, I take daily uh, multivitamins and uh, omega fish oil tablets, but I've got some today for the kids as well, just so the kids are getting, you know, what they need and, uh, my wife being a nurse, we don't know if she, well, she is classed as a key worker, but we don't know if I do go back to work in the coming weeks because, hey, kids could be off school or suggest until September then. Uh, who's got to look after the kids? If I go back to work, I work at JCB. We shut down yesterday for till the 30th. Uh, what happens thereafter is still unknown, sadly. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Anyone listening, if you can't get out metal detecting, you know, is even as things as simple as doing step ups on the bottom step of your of your stairs. If you live in a bungalow, that'll be a bit difficulty. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you'll you'll find a way somehow. Uh, you know, I, I went to um, I'm a, I'm under the chronic pain clinic, Gary, and I went to a physio course, which was a four week course with them. And um, some of the things I learned about the the ability to do exercises at home without treadmills without bikes exactly etc etc i i was astounded so then books are coming out and i'm actually gonna i i am i've made i'm gonna make the um the mental effort never mind the physical effort to actually do things like that so uh you'll be getting a bill for uh from the missus having to buy new stair carpet because you'll wear it out because <laughs> you'll be going up and down the stairs too much <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know. You know, if all this goes off, I don't know if you can even walk the dogs. Uh, well, that's the thing. But the, the problem is, if, if you, I live in Wiltshire, and it's 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 very parts of it are very very isolated, and it's like and it's like I said, you know, Sunday morning I'll pick Steve up in the Land Rover about seven o'clock, half seven in the morning, and if he's watching, he's going to have a freak out because he's got to get up early on Sunday morning. Um, sorry, Steve. Um, so he's going to yeah, but. There'll be not a soul on the road and um, we'll go out to this field and it'll be in the middle of nowhere as i've said before we won't see a soul all day we'll metal detect all day we'll come home and we might have seen well well no one apart from ourselves we'll be sick of the sight of each other all day um so we haven't made contact so i don't think that they're going to be i think they're going to be more concentrating on the large towns and the cities and where you get big concentrations of people you know that's i think where there's going to be i don't think walking your dogs is going to be an issue i really don't um, unless you obviously live in the towns and the cities where you you have to walk your dogs in parks with a lot of other people um in which case you have to get one of those doggy treadmills that you can buy yeah, and, yeah. you know stick them on a treadmill stick them on a normal treadmill with a sausage <laughs> yeah. hanging down <laughs> that's exactly right you can do that look what i've just, look, look what I've just learned to do <laughs> and i'm trying to find I'm trying to learn how to use it and i found i could do that so yeah. There you go. Apologies for tonight's issues. At least we got going. We're on a watered down version, which now is getting a bit better. Any yeah. questions? I will see in the sidebar and be able to uh, to ask. So, mm. Gary, we we do have. I don't. Apologies. I don't know who it is because the system isn't obviously connecting as I would expect it to. Mm. Uh, one of the users, as you can see, uh, he asks, "What time can people check in for the Rodney Cook Memorial?" Yeah. If he goes out. 
Uh, let, let's just ask that question so it doesn't get forgot. Yeah, the, yeah. They, can, uh, they, they can arrive at 12, um, and the gates won't be open until 12, 12 o'clock. Um, and then once they've checked in, uh, which would be very straightforward, if they're camping, if they want to put their tent up, um, they can. They've got two hours until detecting starts at two on the Friday. Um, for the campers, there's, there's a set aside field um strictly for the campers only for the weekenders who are coming on the friday so yeah it's so a 12 o'clock 12 o'clock brilliant uh <laughs> i like this one i've got to show this one because it made me chuckle i don't know who it is but it made me chuckle there you go <laughs> still waiting <laughs> talking is now banned due to the virus <laughs> i wouldn't know what they're talking about what's talking never heard of whoever it. you are kudos <laughs> Did you ever watch Peter K's? Did you ever watch Peter K's shark? Pete, Peter K's car share. That was hilarious, wasn't it? Yeah, when she thought <laughs> he was talking about it. Yeah, taking a taking a dog for a walk. <laughs> uh, another another one of uh, my things there. Just so you know, Luke was unable to get a Wi-Fi connection tonight. Uh, hence being able to to produce the show. So I've, I'm doing it. Luckily, being able to do it because the the podcast wouldn't connect. So I'm learning as I go on the stream, as you can see by these pink things popping up. Uh, it's also, it's not linked. It's normally on uh, Luke's YouTube account. Uh, I thought it would come up on my own YouTube account, but again, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So uh, I'm unable to see if that's the case. So for the people who usually listen and watch on uh, Luke's YouTube site, I apologize for that. Uh, but at least, you know, some of you are here on Facebook and, and it will be downloaded and re-uploaded onto uh, to YouTube for uh, the future anyway. Uh, I totally agree with this Facebook user. Let's just hope we have a rally season this year. Uh, totally well, agree with Yeah. Um, yes. I've got everything crossed. Uh, literally everything crossed. Mm -hmm. um, I won't show you everything that I've crossed, but I've got it all crossed. Um it would be a shame if we lost, you know, the, the rallies this year. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, with the, the two detectables going, which is heart wrenching, really. I know how much Mark and Karen and, and the rest of the team put into putting these digs on for people. And having been doing the Rodney Cook for the last two years, I can now fully accept how much work goes into doing a rally. Um, and, you know, especially something the size of, you know, the detectables as well. Um, it's a lot and it's heart wrenching. And um, but as I said before, completely the right call. And if anybody says it's not, then they need their bloody head examined because Mark is yeah. thinking and Karen are thinking of the punters who, are, who, who come and they're thinking of his, the people who work with him. And, I, and he's thinking of of of, of the, the families of the people who were attending and the people who worked for him. So he's made him and Karen have made completely the right call. And and um, I've learned a lot from Mark, as I said before. I, uh, when I first started to do, had the idea of this rally, he was one of the first people that I made contact with because of his experience. And 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 I can't express how much I I have to um, thank him for really for all of his. Yeah sitting down and listening to me getting wound up and listening to me on the phone shouting down the phone and getting angry and especially with the problems i had with the first rally with certain individuals um he was my a real rock for me to sit down and talk to and he never ever once said gaz i gotta go well, gaz i'm busy can we talk about this another time he always listened and he always yeah. had time for me so yeah, yeah 100 backing for me if you know, that doesn't mean how a could, lot. How could he not have chat for you? You're just so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm presuming. Uh, Did you tell again, that for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think this is uh, from from uh, Mark himself. He says, Gaz, before I forget, I want to say thank you for your kind words. Uh, bro means a lot. I'm, I'm presuming that's off Mark. Uh, again, well, I would say from, so. from what people will see. In fact, I'll, I'll share the screen so people can actually see what I'm seeing. Uh, on the right hand side uh, of the screen here, you will see uh, all these comments and it's coming up. Graham Dempsey, for some reason, he's coming up as Graham Dempsey, but for everybody else, it's coming up as a Facebook user, uh, sadly. So uh, I'm not 100%. If you'd like to put your name on any comments, obviously that would be uh, a lot, lot of help. 
Uh, anyway. <laughs> I've just seen one there, so, Mark. Uh, he, he's basically saying, I've got to stop it because I'm going to make him cry. I have a tendency, <laughs> I have a tendency of doing that at the Rodney Cook rallies. I get so many big butch lads come up to me at the Rodney Cook rally and and they, they, they basically, you know, there's one particular guy from Bristol and he's built like a brick, you know what? And he uh, he comes up to me every year and he goes, look, you've just got to shut up. He said, because every time you do your talk, you make me you make me think of my dad or my mum and it brings tears to our eyes. And But that's what we, you know, we're talking Gary, about. That. Gary had done exactly that to me last year. It was, it was <laughs> my first occasion, you know, me and Luke Connor, thank you enough for, for inviting us. And uh, when you've done the, I think it was on the Saturday night uh, that you'd done your your speech in the the marquee when it was full and you were doing the detector draw and what have you. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, you hit me. So uh, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> but if it goes to the the one thing the one thing with the Rodney Cook rally uh, is I do say when you when you come to the event you have to put up with me talking about why we do the event and for everybody who's who's been there for the last two events, they have to listen to it for a third time. But there's always new new guys and girls who, who have come for the first time. And I think it's they should know the reason why the event is held and why it's been done. I know me and you are going to talk about that, you know, in, in a short while. Um, but that is one of the things they have to put up with. If they don't like it, they can leave the tent. And I know I'm known for not shutting up. Um, <laughs> and that's probably why I'm in sales. But Fair news. I'm afraid with this with the Rodney Cook rally and why we do it, I'll never shut up because the, yeah. the what we do is such an amazing thing for people that why should I shut up about it? I'm very Absolutely. proud of it. You know, Graham so. Dempsey, uh, our guest last week, he asked, "Have you had the play of your composite cleaning pencil yet?" <laughs> yes, I have, mate, and thank you for sending me one. And Graham's um, is the latest addition to the Rodney Cook. He will be attending the Rodney Cook rally and demonstrating and selling his new pencil. And yes, I've tried it on a couple of Roman coins, mate, and fantastic results. Absolutely amazing. Um, I never thought the crud could come off and leave for some of the coins. I'd had no idea there was such an amazing coin underneath it. You know, it's the sort of thing you think, oh, I'm bloody put that in my grot box. But mm. with this pencil, it's like, coins are coming to life so fantastic product mate and, and Fair massive, and, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, we, yeah we asked him last week uh obviously we were discussing him attending detectable but obviously he'll be attending rcm and we were discussing uh would he be doing some uh you know show and tell actually mm. cleaning coins and such like and i can't wait because my finds aren't as uh as 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 good as other people's it, it's generally i don't get out as much as i'd like it's generally more modern finds but from what i tried yeah it they, they were coming up splendidly i can't wait to actually oh, see in person what yeah. happens with other things it's it's a great piece of kit and as yeah. i say um you know it makes you think to yourself well some of the grotty roman coins that i found over the many years i've been doing this hobby some of them you know i've got probably 17 years of cleaning to get on with now because it's going to take me that long to get through all of the Roman coins that I've Hey, you're off, you'll be off work, you'll be at home, you can you can, yeah, you can, I mean. so and it, you can it, clean it, at the same time. So when I went out, when, my, when, my, when I ran the pencil down to a small point, I'm, I might need your help again, Graham. <laughs> you know, with all due respect, uh, Graham, given the circumstances and, and everybody staying at home, it would be a perfect opportunity for people to contact Graham and discuss uh, page the, the cleaning kit and the the wax, because you you you'll have a, you, your head's going to go with the four walls. You'll have the opportunity to sit and clean the things you always said you'd sit and clean. Mm. I will be myself. I'll be getting out the things that I know are in my box here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you my box here. I'm going to make some noise and it's going to get some trouble uh, picking it up. Well, I'm sure there's a. You I'm sure there's a double. I'm sure there's a double one there, Dave. Somewhere. No. Sure in the box. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There was. There is now. Steve's uh, always doing that in the film. It's terrible. This was made for me by a lady called Catherine Sadler. I can't remember the radio show Facebook page tomorrow. Group, sorry. Uh, this was made for me by a lady called Catherine Sadler. Excellent last name. Lovely lady, and uh, she's making these boxes. As you can oh, see, wow. lovely yeah, box. Good, but, but wait, yeah. but wait, there's more. How was that? Oh, fantastic! Isn't Look at it? That. That's amazing. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, 
Uh, it's it's full because uh, and it's all velvet lined as well. Uh, it's full because uh, my brother uh, buys and sells stuff, and I've got multiple, and I mean multiple uh, queen collections going on, Brilliant. and uh, and other things. And there's you know, as I say, the stuff that I do want to uh, to get into myself. I mean, there's a, a there's a, a horse brass there. I can't wait to. Uh, to put, hey, look, show and tell. I'm not showing and telling because. <laughs> They are crappy fine. No, hey, look. It's, it, there's an old saying in there, you know, um, one man's junk is another man's treasure. And it you, is. You, you found it. And it, it doesn't matter, does it? You know, I've always Gary, said that to people. I still get the buzz. It, my favourite find, uh, we've all got a favourite general find, something that you'll find repeatedly and you're like, I oh, love them. Musket balls. If I find a musket ball, I still buzz. I remember a friend of mine, he used to find musket balls. This is back in the early 2000s. His name was Steve Parsons. And he always found musket balls. We're on Marston Moor. And I still, people are picking, walking along with me, picking up musket balls off the ground. And I'm, I never found a musket ball. And he actually had one cast for me. <laughs> there you go. That's yours. So he gave yeah. me the, the musket ball. I found my first musket ball and it was like shedding shed peas. I had loads of them. So I actually, I think I give it to uh, uh, a friend of mine called Lisa Mallon because she hadn't found the musket ball. So when she finds a musket ball, she has to pass it on to someone. <laughs> you know what, mate? But that all joking aside, it's, it's still history and it's still a great find. And yeah, I know. I've just noticed there, there's a, People saying about having a tear in their eye, and there's one there. It says, "I've had tears in my eyes before with Cookie when he finds stuff on my permission." I can guarantee you that's Paul Bancroft. Okay, <laughs> I can guarantee you that Paul Bancroft. That is one hundred percent. I do have a tendency of finding things when I go out metal detecting with him on his permission. Um, that's one hundred percent Paul Bancroft. I can guarantee you that. Um, but but no, I was saying, you know, what I still get a buzz now. When I, you know, I, I, and and <laughs> that's Steve Murray. That's Steve Murray's <laughs> reply, one hundred percent, because he's a terrible lurker. We call him, and he lurks behind you when you start digging, and then he starts digging up the good stuff behind you. Um, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> um, but you know what, Dave? If you enjoy the hobby, it, it, does it really matter sometimes? If and this is what the hobby's about: great friends. Yeah. You know, Paul and Steve, two of my closest friends, and we're having banter even on your show. This is exactly the same sort of banter as we have when we're in the field together. Mm. And they're my wingmen, those two. They're my good mates. And they're both Rodney Cook Rally fellow organisers. And they're brilliant friends. And I've been detecting with both of them for many, many years. Paul, I met in the field. You know, we've, we've been detecting on the same permission and we had no idea and we bumped into each other one day and um, we've very been very very close friends since steve i've known for donkey's years and he's he, he 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 yeah he's just there all the time basically but but he's one of my one of my closest friends and you know we we share our permissions with each other we, we even share the land road that we bought together you know for detecting it and but this is what the hobby's really about you know it's it's the fun side of it. It's the great friends that you make. It's the people that you make, and um, they are they're 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 the reason why I stay in the hobby. You yeah. know, um, because sometimes the hobby can bring me down. You know, I look at how the hobby's changed over the years since I've started, um, and some of it is for the good, and some of it is also for the bad, um, which I won't tend to go into too much. But you know, the hobby has got bigger since I did it, started doing it. And it's got more commercialized, you know, there's a lot more, it, 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 you know what, it's each to their own. And um, it's a wonderful hobby. And that to me is what the hobby is really about. Is the, the, my best finds I've ever made are the friends that I make in the yeah. field. That's I, my best find. I totally agree. I mean, I could, I could list an abundance of people. And I'll forget them. Digger Dawn, I call her my little sister. She calls me big brother. Mm. Uh, Scotty B. I won't have a word said against Scotty B. Um, you know, he's he's so nice and so genuine and so thoughtful 
What uh, that's it. Look at me and Luke. We'd never met until last year. No, no, sorry. Detectable 2018. Mm. We've been communicating via the phone. We've been communicating by Facebook for three, four years. We've been doing the magazine together for, for three years. And we get on like house on fire. Yeah. Probably if we lived close, we would never have spoken because we'd never probably cross paths. I love him to bits. Uh, he's, he's done, he, it's, it's Luke that keeps me doing the magazine. If it wasn't for Luke, again, as you said, there's so many times that you've gone, oh, I, I just haven't got the heart to do it. And then somebody mm. picks you up. The same with Paul and Steve of you. Uh, Luke's exactly the same with me. And, and I hope and I think I'm the same with Luke in a lot of respects as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, friends, like, like, you, can't, exactly. you, can't, no. you can't argue with anything like that about no. not detecting. Like you, I, I could list so many people that I've made friends with. You know, I've got um, John Lydell, for instance. He might be listening tonight. He might not. He's not the best at using Facebook, to be fair. <laughs> Sorry, John, but you're not. Um, he is another fantastic, amazing friend of mine that I met through the Trowbridge Club, and he is an integral part of the Rodney Cook Rally. And um, he, without him, he's like my old, my biggest old brother. He won't like. He won't hear a word said badly against about me. Um, you know, I can't understand why, but there you go. Um, but he, to, effectively, if you want to get to me, you've got to get through John. And um, he is an amazing guy. And, yeah, we've all found amazing things. You know, like, for instance, there's my axe head that I found not too long ago with Steve. Oh, that's nice. You know, it's... Jealous. <laughs> a, a pal Steve axe head. It's fantastic. You know, an amazing find. Um, but for me, like I said... It's it's the friends that I've made that are my best finds I've ever made in, in, in metal detecting. And some of the guys who helped me with Dad's Rally, well, you know, are amazing people. And I could be here all day naming every single one of them. And I will a little bit later on thank a few people whilst I've got the opportunity. Um, but it, it, the buzz for me is being out in the field in all winds and weather, it doesn't matter, with my friends, enjoying a good day out. And if we find something, it's a bonus. If we don't, we've had a great day in the fresh air, great fun. And to me, that is exactly what metal detecting should be about. And don't get me wrong, I've got no problem with with with, with the big groups and, 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 and businesses because they're, they're great for getting people giving people the opportunity to go out and metal detect because metal detecting has become so huge since the time I started doing it and the time some of my my other friends who've been doing it longer than me the, 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 with Facebook and social media it's it's made metal detecting more the opportunity to, to, to metal detect has been has been made a lot bigger by by the onset of social media but it's also meant that certain you, you can't, it's so difficult to get permissions now. I'm very lucky. I've got, I had most of my permissions in place long before social media and Facebook and places like that really took hold. And I'm quite, as you probably can tell, I'm quite an open, easy going person. I can talk to most people. I do it for a living. So going down a private track that says private road, do not enter with the risk of being shot, whatever the farmers put up up there on their post, I will still go down that track and I will knock on the door. But a lot of people, that's very intimidating. And they, they find it difficult to talk to the farmer. Yeah. They find it difficult to knock on that door, you know, and to get the permission. And they find that very, oh, no, I can't do that. And To be honest, Gary, I get very anxious myself when I'm in that position. The amount yeah. of times I've drove past, I will knock on that door. Oh, no. No, 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 no. They won't like me. They won't say yes to me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I, I don't. It does, that doesn't bother me. If, if they tell me to off, then they tell me to off. If they say, no, I'm really sorry, but we got someone, absolutely fine, you walk away. But then there's always the off chance that you will get a yes. And I'm not saying it's everybody's cup of tea, but that's why these groups are, are, are great, because they can help people. Like Mark's Metal Detectives, for instance. You know, he's one of the early ones. And um, he is, a, you know, he's given the opportunity to so many people who would never other than that been able to have gone out metal detected unless they've gone to the beach or you know so these groups can do so much good um in 
to 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 to, to, norm, to the to the normal everyday guy. You know, so. I, could, I could I could see you reading there and fumbling because you're trying not to laugh as you're speaking. <laughs> what is that from? <laughs> Facebook user. Should we look into that? Who was that? Who was that? I don't I've know. I've seen the bullet in the land. That's me getting shot by the pilot as I'm driving up this track. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. That is very good. Um, but you know, and you know uh, again, it, it's it's. The amount of times that I've messed up, I've made, um, I've made a, a bad judgment call. I've done something wrong. I've said something wrong, and I'm talking behind the scenes or at meetings and stuff like that. The amount of times that Luke's corrected me, even on the show last week, Luke was correcting me for something I said incorrectly. And if it wasn't for Luke, I'd be in a lot more trouble than I, I usually end up getting into anyway. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I do have a tendency of. Um... Sometimes speaking my mind and, and being a little bit, you know, put me put me foot in it, as it were, or say something, and then John will give me a nudge in the back, or Steve will sort of give me the shut the up sign, sort of thing, you know, <laughs> um, because I can have a tendency of, of saying what I feel, um, but I've always been like that. And at the end of the day, if people don't like what I say, or if they don't agree with me, then they don't agree. We've all got our own opinions. At the end of the day, um, about I, as I say, but. The groups have done a fantastic job in allowing the everyday guy who, because there's not a lot of land left out there to, you know, to get permissions on, um, they've done great jobs in helping people get them. But the, the, the other downside to it is that the guys who do door knock and try to get permissions are being soaked up by the groups. I've lost three. I've had three of my own personal permissions and Steve's as well, obviously. We've lost out to groups over the last couple of you know year or so that we've had groups start start going on them but do you get upset do you get wound up do you start effing and blinding then what's the point you know you, you just get on with it you can't do anything about it it's the farmer's land at the end of the day he's got every right to allow who he wants on it onto it you don't own the fields just because you've yeah. got permission to metal detect them doesn't give you the sole god right that nobody else is allowed to go on there and metal detect and most of the groups are pretty good if they know that there is somebody else out there doing them then they will either liaise with the person who's metal detecting them already on the farm or they will walk away um and i'm not saying every one of them is like that i'm sure some of them will will, will pretend they didn't hear that there's somebody else detecting it but if at the end of the day there's nothing you can do about it it's the farmer's land at the end of the day and yeah. he's got every right to allow who he wants on that particular mm -hmm. farm and if he decides to have a group go on does you know i don't get wound up occasionally i might talk up the odd little rant and bloody hell you know but in the big scheme of things look at what's happening in the world at the moment there's a lot worse things to worry about than losing yeah. a farm to another group at the end of the day the way i look at it is i don't have to pay to go on there but everybody else does <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it, it, it's it's frustrating but at the same time social media has done wonders for the hobby we wouldn't be having our conversation now if it wasn't for social we media. certainly wouldn't gary now and we probably wouldn't have met because i wouldn't have known about well we wouldn't have been doing yeah. the magazine we wouldn't have done the magazine down and and also sorry while it comes to mind regarding the printed version of the archaeology and metal detecting oh. magazine sadly due to the um uh, postponement of spring detectable uh, and the cancellation of summer detectable we will not be able to go into print because of obviously advertising and whatnot. They, the, the advertisers will not be advertising as much. We will not be able to go into print uh, until the next event that is taking place takes place. Instead, what we will be doing is releasing the uh, the magazines as a PDF version and placing them on the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine website. Uh, obviously, it takes a, a hell of a lot of uh time which luke has been putting together a lot of money which obviously we don't get and it's so the magazines are paid for to be free by the advertisers which again we will always support them and give them a shout out lp regdon's um Nocta macro um rutus graham dempsey's got a uh, thingy in there i mean i'll discuss that with with graham in the coming days um the articles will st will still be in there but obviously the magazine will not be able to be printed sadly 
but you will get access to the PDF for free, no problem whatsoever. So sorry for interjecting there, Gary. I was just no, no, no. You clicked yeah. my mind into place. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, so, yeah. so the, the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally, we've yes. alluded to it obviously quite a few times this year. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, it does take place, if not next year, because the the location sounds absolutely phenomenal. Well, yeah, um, you, you know the background to the Rodney Cook. I can explain it to you if you want me to. Uh, For those who are listening, I'd love you to, please, Gary. Yeah, uh, the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally came about from something exceptionally awful um, for me personally. Uh, I lost my father, Rodney, obviously, um, to cancer in 2017 after the best part of a two-year battle. Um, he was a very brave man, my dad. Um, and he was my best friend and he was my best mate. And we did so much together as I was a child. He couldn't, I could never have wished for a better dad. Um, he was always there for me. He's always had time for me. He always supported me in everything that I did as a child. And sometimes when I was young, I wasn't always the most, um, how can I put it, the, the, the easiest of child to have, child to have brought up. I, could, I had my moments. But he, 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 he was, it was unconditional with my dad. And so when I lost him, it was probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. I couldn't have imagined pain could be so without being cut or, or injured. To, to actually feel pain like that was something I, I, I'd never even imagined or contemplated existed. And um, so from, from something exceptionally awful in losing my father, after the dust had settled with losing him, and you know he fought very hardly, very, very strongly for two years, he was put on this new drug called uh, immunotherapy, um, which is basically um, therapy for your own personal immune system. It teaches your immune system to see cancer as a, um, I suppose, to see cancer as something that shouldn't be there, because that's the problem with cancer, it's stealth, it's a sneaky, asshole sorry for swearing it gets into your body and acts all lovely nicely and your body doesn't see it as a, as a problem and then by the time it does see it as a problem it is a problem um so immunotherapy was was a new drug and and it was a and the people who were administering in the hospital were fantastic amazing people at the bathroom united cancer care unit i cannot vouch and say how i speak so any more highly of them than i can imagine amazing people uh what they do and this drug kept my dad going for another nearly two years when initially his prognosis was only three months um it kept him going and he when he passed away and once the dust had settled on that um i wanted to try and come up with an idea that would help support or raise some money for the for the cancer ward and the cancer care unit at, at the, the, the Bath Royal United Hospital. They're having a new big building built strictly uh, for, for, for cancer care and for the support of families uh, with cancer patients in the hospital and people who go there for, for, for their treatments. Um, and it's the Forever Friends Appeal, as many of you know. And I wanted to try and do something. And I got together with some friends, you know, Steve and, um, and John and, and a few others. And I wanted to try and come up with an idea and there's one particular person I need to thank massively which is Dave Crisp everybody knows Dave Crisp he's the guy who found the Froom Hoard uh, the largest single pot of Roman coins ever found in the UK um, he's the rally coordinator without Dave there would be no Rodney Cook I can guarantee you that now uh, Dave is an amazing man um, he's recently lost his wife she passed away last December and he's now dealing with using the Rodney Cook as a way of, I don't know, um, it gives him something to focus on. But he he's an amazing man, Dave, and um, I cannot speak highly enough of him. You know, he, he, he's my he's my rock. And like I say, he's rally coordinator and he wouldn't, there wouldn't be a Rodney Cook without him. Um, and we came up with the idea for the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally. It was effectively going to start as just a one day dig um, with the hope of raising four or five hundred pounds that we could donate to the Forever Friends. But it actually 
it grew. It, it went from the idea of being a one day to, to people saying, well, why don't you do a weekender? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And that is how the first one came about. We, you know, we, we the first rally was 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 an amazing weekend because it was the first one we've we, we we'd done, and it and it was the first rally that brought everybody together with one sole purpose: to raise as much money as we can for a good cause. And I'm not saying there's there's lots of other rallies that, that donate money and marks detective all raise an amazing amount of money every year on their raffles um for for for, 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 for you know amazing charities um kim um clark another good friend of mine kim's rallies down in uh, mainly down in essex and norfolk and places like that another amazing man um you know i've known kim for many many years and i've learned a lot from kim and he's a great guy if you go i've been to I used to go to all these rallies and they're all for charity. Um, you know, you've got um, in Dorset um, and West Pathfinders, I think, you know, um, they raise a lot of money. Um, but we wanted to do something that was solely for charity and to try and raise as much money as we could. And the first Rodney Cook rally that we did, we raised £28,000, which was an amazing amount of money for a metal detector. It was. Nobody had ever heard of it before, that you could raise so much money in one weekend purely by getting a load of guys in a field metal detecting and even the people we were raising money for were, were dumbfounded when we when i first approached the forever friends appeal at the cancer and, and told them what we were doing they had no idea even what metal detecting really was and when i started speaking to um to the to the to the girls there uh, fundraisers and they sort of went back to their bosses and said oh we've got a group of people who're going to hold a metal detecting event and they were all oh right okay yeah lovely they might raise a couple of hundred quid and as the weeks went by and we got closer and closer to the rally you know the, the girls at the forever friends were were coming to our meetings and chatting um we started to see what we could achieve and how and, and how how we could achieve it but they were still quite in the dark a little bit you know about about how much we could actually raise so when we actually told them how much it was their exact words to me was everybody in the office was literally a spitting out their tea moment spitting out their coffee moment because the girl came into the into the into the office and on the monday morning and they all said um, so how was the weekend how was that metal detected event how much did they raised a couple of hundred quid she said, try 28,000. And everybody went, <laughs> with their team, literally, how much? 28,000. And they had absolutely no, they, they were absolutely dumbfounded. And when we went to the evening presentation in November um, of, of 20, uh, 2018, uh, the presentation evening, everybody there was just amazed at what we could achieve. And it, it inspired us on to do last year's. And we wanted to be bigger and better um and we had a learning curve the first year we learned a lot and we're still learning a lot and as i said before i learned a lot from, from very good friends of mine who, who who've been doing it for many years and i sat and listened and i had cups of tea with them and and, and 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 took all the advice on board and listened to every one of them to make the rodney cook what it is and we're now finding that you know we're getting people from all over the world come to the rodney cook rally you know, Australia, Canada, America, all over Europe, hopefully, uh, you know, um, and it's an amazing coming together of people. And we we don't care what metal detector you use. We don't care how much experience you've got. We don't care if you've only been doing it a week. We don't care if you've been doing it for, you know, we have time for everybody at the Rodney Cook. And it's, it's almost like it's a, a coming together of a clan of people or family to get together and, and 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 have a we try to make everybody have a great time you know we want to try and install that in everybody at the rodney cook that we're there for one reason to help other people who are suffering with cancer and help the families of those who are suffering with cancer and last year we did split it up to in a, in a couple of other charities as well um we split it up between uh click sergeant which is cancer leukemia in children and we also gave some money to uh, a charity called Star. I think it's Starlight, and they um, 
organize things for families of children who were suffering with, with you know with cancer and, 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 and terminally ill diseases and it allows them to go on trips of a lifetime you know Disneyland with the family and things and that was solely because um, the grandson Luke of one of the other organizers Ray Case his grandson is was suffering from leukemia and if any of you went to the Rodney Cook rally last year you'll know exactly who I'm talking about and you'll remember the piece in the marquee where we showed everybody the beads um, and when we stretched the, the line of beads across one end of the marquee to the other, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Yeah, you're um, right. You're right. Um, that was a very emotional moment. Now, if, 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 just to briefly explain it, um, when a child suffering with leukemia has treatment, if any type, any type of treatment, they're given a small bead and they put it on a, on a piece of string and every bead represents a treatment that that particular child has had through their course of, you know, uh, of having their treatment for leukemia. And Luke's beads literally stretched from one end of the marquee to the other. Exactly. And if you were lengthwise, not widthwise, lengthwise. Yeah, and if I you, can certainly uh, attest to that. And there were the best part of 600 odd beads, I think, if I remember rightly. Mm, yeah. And every bead represented a treatment in that little boy's life. And that really brought it home to people. It did what we were doing mm -hmm. at the Rodney Cook and what we will continue to do for as long as everybody wants us to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as my sanity allows me to keep doing it. <laughs> um, Gary, I've, I've just got to bring a picture up because uh, some of your uh, friends have, have, uh, have been discussing uh, something about a frome hoard. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, there he is. That's so, Dave. Uh, that's, that's Dave, the frome hoard, apparently. Uh, apparently, you're hoard, yeah. but you're not allowed to mention it or something. No, but the, the in joke at the club is he doesn't like to talk about it very much um, <laughs> because he he loves talking about it. Absolutely loves it, um, and he's got every right to talk about it. You know, he he found it, I think, in 2010, um, and he. Yeah, he was detected in a, in, a, in a field local to where we all live. Um, and he came across a very iffy signal. And the rest is history, really. 50, best part of 53,000 coins in one pot. Fantastic. The largest, largest single hoard um, ever found. There has been um, a couple of others, I think, where we were bigger, but they were in two separate pots. Dave's was in one massive, massive pot. We, we were um, looking at the RCM uh, rally to actually be able, one of our, our early editions, uh, not the one where I forgot to turn the microphone on, <laughs> <laughs> one of the other um, podcasts, we were actually able to speak to Dave about the whole yes. it, uh, it was fascinating. It was, uh, yeah, kudos to him and, you know, best wishes to Dave. Fantastic. A very, very, very good orator as well. Uh, oh, yeah, he's wrote a book uh, about metal detecting. Yeah. Um, a, a beginner's guide to metal detecting. He doesn't like to talk about that either. Um, and he's, uh, I think he's still writing his, his second book. I, I, apparently, we're all, we're all meant to be in it. Um, you know, we, we, we <laughs> he keeps threatening to put us all, all the guys into his book and some of our finds that we've made over the years. But as I said about, I, I don't have enough um, good words to say about Dave because he is um, he is one of the the heroes of the Rodney Cook. There's many of them, you know, Paul Bancroft who, who's on here, Steve Merton who's on here, John Lydell who's on here, um, everybody at the Trowbridge Metal Detecting Club. You know, they're all on. Brent, um, another friend of mine, Brent, he helps out. You know, there's my and, and, and one of the biggest ones I've got to say is, is Lisa, my wife. Because none of you would be booked in without Lisa. Lisa has been, Lisa spends all day on a computer. She works in a school. And so she's on a computer a lot during her working life. She comes home and she gets in front of the computer and she starts booking people in. And she is, she is an amazing lady. I know she's my wife and, and, and I've got to say that, otherwise I'll be in trouble. Um, but she, but what she does for the for, for the for the Rodney Cook is, is amazing. She she gets everybody's questions answered. She gets them booked in safe and sound. And she she basically tells the rest of us, you know, what we can and cannot do. And Dave coordinates us um, and it all works. 
we're all different in our own different ways at the Rodney Cook. Um, and what we do, you know, but there's one end goal for why we do it, you know, and that is to make as much money for cancer as we can. You know, last year we raised £36,500 in one yeah, weekend. Fantastic. And it was split. And this year, this year, if it all happens, well, we've got to break 50. Yes, we're, we're, we're all keeping our... We're all keeping our fingers crossed, obviously, um, for the Rodney Cup this year. And we're all in uncharted territory, aren't we, at the moment? We, every, we every one of us in the country is in uncharted territory. We've never experienced anything quite like this before. So we're all hoping and praying that, that it soon goes away. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I heard Boris Johnson say tonight that he's looking at hopefully if we all club together and do our bit, there could be light at the end of the tunnel after 12 weeks. Look, we're still nearly just under six months away from the Rodney Cook. We're still just under half a year away from the Rodney Cook and Mark's main detectable. So a lot can happen in 24 hours with this virus, let alone six months. We haven't made um, a decision on whether we're going to go ahead or not with the Rodney Cook at the moment. At the moment, we are definitely 100% on, I should say, I worded that wrong. We haven't made any rash decisions yet. There's plenty of time to make a decision if things start to go belly up. Now, if things continue the way they are with this virus and by later on in the year, it, it isn't looking very good, I will make a decision to cancel and postpone the Rodney Cook, 100%, just like Marcus had to do with the early detectables. I will not hesitate. I will pull the plug on the Rodney Cook this year. I will not put myself and my family and my fellow organisers and their families and everybody who attends the rallies and their families at any form of risk by holding the Rodney Cook this year if, if I think for one minute it will cause an issue. And I will also refund we will refund, not me personally, we will refund anyone if, the, if it's cancelled. What we will what we've dis, what we will be able to do is we will say to people, your ticket is valid for next year. If we have to make that awful decision and call it off, then all tickets will be that are all with you and booked and paid for will be validated for next year's event. Because we will just be at the same place that we were going to be at this year. Everything will be exactly the same. It will just be in one year's time. So everything is in place to hold it at this particular site. And I'll talk a little bit more about the site in a minute. But for the time being, everything is OK. And as I say, we will honour the tickets for next year if we have to cancel. And if anybody can't think that far ahead, they oh, we don't know if we can make it next September, they can have their money back. And we will also say now, categorically, if there's anybody out there, if the Rodney Cook is continuing, but if there's anybody out there who decides that they don't want to come to the Rodney Cook rally because of the virus, we will refund anybody who wants their money back because it's a charity event at the end of the day. We're not in it to make money and we're not making, we're not a business. We're a charity and we are making money for the charity. And if there's anybody out there who feels unhappy about coming to the Rodney Cook this year, if we decide if it is going ahead and they're still unhappy about coming, they have no problem whatsoever. They just make an email to, to, to us and we will refund them their money. But of course we will. It's, it goes without saying. And on top of that, if anybody wants to keep their ticket and use it for next year, obviously they have that option. So we can, we're covering all, all bases. We're, we're giving people the option. You know, we're not going to turn around and say tough. You know, it's not refundable because there's this sort of circumstances. You know, you have to you have to have a little bit of give and take. And as I said before, people we, we, we're not done that. We're not in that position yet. We're still five and a half, nearly just under six months away from having to, you know, make a decision on anything. So let's for the time being, the Rodney Cook is still on unless it's taken out of our hands. Or we're in no better position than what we are. And, you know, if, if it's the same position now, then I won't, well, as I said before, I won't hesitate to cancel it, Dave. I really won't. Mm. 
Well, have you noticed I've uh, learned how to do something else while we've been talking? <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got another one that's got to come on in a minute. So, right. oh, I, so, oh, I see. Right, yes, we knew you meant so We hide that one and we show that one. You'll see that one uh, is actually the Facebook uh, web address for the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally 2020 page. Uh, obviously, just look on Facebook, Rodney Cook Memorial Rally 2020, yeah. and all the information, all the updates, everything else that you'll need for their RCM rally will be in that group. Uh, I'm sure every single thing that you know will be there, won't it, Gary? Yes. Yeah, everything that you need is, is there. We're obviously only an email away as well. Everybody knows the email address, charity detected event at hotmail.com um we do post quite a lot up on facebook i have been banned from over posting on facebook in the last month or so i was on a bit of a facebook but i think i overdid it a little bit um what was what was the email address sorry gary it's charity yeah. detecting event charity detecting event all one word at hotmail.com okay and if you want to attend you need to email uh, that we have been um, absolutely amazed at the support that we are getting for this particular. I I want to bow down in front of all of you um, who have booked and paid for your tickets because you guys never cease to amaze me and the rest of the team for your almost unconditional support for this particular rally. Um, you guys are amazing. All of you who attend are, are absolutely fantastic. You know, you, you're an amazing bunch. And it's great to see a lot of you returning again. Um, and I have some good friends from Canada and Australia, America, are all coming back again, hopefully, for the rally this year. And um, I, it, it, it buzzes me so much with the support that I get from so many people. Um, wanting to help me with this rally you know um we've had quite a lot of support from from different people um a lot of them will be going up onto the you know we we, we want to thank a lot of people i won't be doing too much saying it now because um you know there's a company called incubus finance who've, who've pledged to help us this year um you know we've um let's go dig in um paul howard is pledged to to support the rally this year and also the, the one thing i want to try and put to bed is i noticed there was a few um a few rumors going around and it's probably the adverts fault to start with so i will take i will i will admit um i noticed that there was a bit of rumors going around that we are under full sponsorship from garrett metal detectors um we're not um under full sponsorship from Garrett Metal Detectors. Garrett Metal Detectors have supported the rally and they've supported the rally um, massively this year. They wanted to help. Um, I've always said there's a massive difference between sponsorship and support. You know, sponsorship means that you do get, you can have a tendency of being dictated to. You're being told what you can and cannot do, or you're being told you, they would like this or they would like that. We're not sponsored by anybody. At the Rodney Cook, we have supporters. We're in an independent rally and we are run independently and we run the rally how we see fit. And we have supporters of the event who want to help us raise money for the charity by supporting us. And Garrett wanted to do a little bit of support and they will be bringing over their, their team of YouTube guys. You all met them at um, Detectable. They're hoping to bring them all over and they will be at the Rodney Cook. And obviously, Garrett will be at the Rodney Cook via Regden Metal Detectors anyway, along with XP, um, because Regden will, uh, you know, they, they're they the importers for, for, for Garrett. Um, and XP, again, will be at the event. Um, so we, I wanted to try and put to bed the rumours that I've noticed, you know, were being sort of, and, and, and it might have been, as I say, I take when we did the advert a little bit of a responsibility for that because i noticed that in the advert the, the the terminology was using sponsorship 
So I removed, when I noticed that it had gone up, I removed it with the word support, which should have been there in the first place. So yes, I apologize completely if anything that we did led people to believe that we are under full sponsorship from Garrett Metal Detectors, because that, and I'm sure Garrett wouldn't want us, wouldn't want that to be known either, because every manufacturer is welcome at the Rodney Cook. We're hoping to have a, a big contingent from, um, from Rutus uh, there as well. Um, and Dr. Macro, uh, Dilik, is hoping to get over for the Rodney Cook. She has expressed an interest in attending. Um, you know, and I, I feel free to, to openly invite all of them for their kind donations of raffle prizes. Mine Lab will, will, will have pledged to support again. Um, XP have pledged support again. Um, they have said that they will be supporting the Rodney Cook. And that's the word I use, support. Because I keep saying it, I don't want people thinking that we are being sponsored by a, one particular manufacturer because we are an open rally. Everybody knows us, um, that we are uh, an independently run rally and all manufacturers are welcome to bring and support their goods and show off their goods. You know, Le Peter Leisure Promotions, for instance, um, another guy I can't speak highly of, um, you know, he supported the Rodney Cook rally right from the very beginning and he will be there again this year. And Pete, as everybody, a lot of people know, is a very, very good friend of mine and he will be supporting the rally again this year. Um, and he will, he's, he's, he, Pete is one of these guys who likes, he, 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 he'll hate me for saying it, but he doesn't look for any recognition at all for the things that he does. Um, he doesn't look for um, any form of um, gratitude or, or, or having his name shouted out in lights. He does it because he wants to do it. And I cannot speak highly enough of Pete Terrell at Leisure Promotions. Um, the guys at Regden, you know, Nigel and Marcus Ingram, again, I've known them for many, many years and they're great people and they will support the rally um, if they can. Obviously, if it goes ahead, they will be there. Um, Roman Remains will be there again. Um, the NCMD will be there again. And Treasure Hunting Magazine will be there and the support I get from Jaws and Dan at Treasure Hunting Magazine is is unprecedented. They're a great bunch of guys. And um and Jaws will be there again. The guys and 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 the searcher team, um, you know, Dan Spencer, a good mate again, he will be there supporting the rally. Um as you heard, Graham will be there with his with his with his cleaning pencil. He will he will be there. And I'm hoping I haven't forgot anybody. Obviously, the Arch Mag, you guys, Dave and Luke, sure, well. you're going to be there. As I said, Rutus and Nocta Macro will be supported there. Um, and that's what I want to try and get over. You know, I want everybody to, to, to understand that everybody is welcome at the Rodney Cook. It doesn't matter what you are, what you do. We're all there as, as one big group of open you know, same principled people trying to do something good from the hobby that's what i want that's what i always wanted to do i wanted to try and make something special with the rodney cook yeah you know i've noticed ray is ray laidlaw there is posting up a few things he comes to every rally he comes to the rodney cook every year and he makes a donation every time he comes and he always brings a, a bottle of whiskey and he and he always makes sure that i have a couple of shots of whiskey in the evening to keep me going to keep me awake because he can see that i'm starting to flounder a little bit and start to get a little bit tired and he'll put his arm around me and he'll give me a he'll, he'll give me a yeah oh boy have a shot of this just to keep me going you know and and i've got so much time for ray he's a great guy um, and as ray says already uh six months away uh you've not even been promoting as as such you've already raised 1880 pounds on the just yeah the, the just given page is, is taken off great you know the donations have started to come in as i say uh, the raffle prizes is, uh, are being pledged i'm staying in touch with all the manufacturers as best i can um you know any man anyone who wants to help with the rally by all means we have an open ticket for anyone who wants to help you know ray advertises all of his to all of his members on his group um you know to to, to come in and, and come to the rally as i said paul howard let's go digging he makes sure 
that on the weekend of the Rodney Cook, there's no let's go digging digs on. And he'd make sure that, oh, cheers, Ray. <laughs> I've just seen your post there. Um, he, Paul, at let's go digging, make sure that he cancels all let's go digging digs for that weekend. And he encourages all of his members to fully support the Rodney Cook. And it makes me really proud that we can all come together as a, as a group of, you know, a fraternity of people. And on the outside, we're all doing our own thing. We're all, we're all running our groups and we're running our, our, our independent groups of metal detectorists. You know, we're doing our pay as you dig things. We're running our own separate shops, Facebook pages, whatever. But the Rodney Cook is a way where we can all come together as one for, for, for one purpose. And that is to try and do something and show the world that we're not a bunch of um, night hawking thieves that a lot of people seem to have us labelled with. There's actually a lot of great people in our hobby and a lot of people who are amazing people who want to do something good. Want to, And that's what I always had and always envisioned that the Rodney Cook would be. The legacy of the Rodney Cook is come and enjoy yourself and go away with a smile on your face and have a great weekend and yes if you find something fantastic brilliant that's that's made the weekend even better but at the very least you go away from the from the rodney cook is having a great time and you say you know what i might have not found anything but boy did we have a good time i certainly did parlor you know some of the people i've spoke to multiple occasions were there uh that i've never met before uh lorraine made the uh, archaeology and metal detecting magazine ale so we got to sample that and got quite yes and uh, yeah. you know do you know one thing that will always stick with me and i know it doesn't doesn't mean much it wasn't the one thing that sticks with me i was spoiled i was i got up in the morning uh saturday morning i thought i had the best night's sleep in my car because i didn't get it right i got up the next morning i thought god i need a drink and there was a little <laughs> red van just outside the tent a oh yes coffee company yeah. And he said, what can I get you? And I went, I don't know. I always have a latte, but I just need some Spill. stuff. I'm, try, I'm trying to medic. I've never, ever, and I've told everybody multiple times, because he was at Detectable as well, I have never had a better cup of coffee than I had off him. Phil. The Americano, yeah. I, I'm just, I miss it so much. Yeah. That's <laughs> Phil. That's uh, cafe to co or cafe to go, coffee to go, cafe to yeah. go. And that's Phil. And he's coming back again this year. Good. Um, he's phenomenal. He is great because he, as soon as I turn up in the morning, he'd be there and he'd go, Do you want a strong one, Gaz? <laughs> um, yeah. And, I, and then what with Ray feeding me whiskey in the evening, I'm on a permanent high because I've got yeah. so much caffeine <laughs> and then alcohol mixed inside of me. I wave the fairies most of the weekend. I leave the rest of it to everybody else. Um, but that's, but that is what it's all about. You know, that is, that's the whole, the whole, that's the, the whole, the whole great thing about the Rodney Cook is I keep stressing it, you know, um, we do everything that we can in our power to make sure that everybody has a great weekend. Last year was, was amazing. There were some great finds made. There was a few fields at the beginning and we hold our hands up a few months because a couple of the fields at the beginning had a bit of waste in them. And, it, and so what we did was we contacted the landowner who gave us a couple of extra fields, which we opened up because of it because we felt so strongly about it but what people didn't realize is that last year's event we had 45 fields wow 900 980 acres over the course of the weekend and yes a couple of the fields on the friday friday had a bit had some green waste in them i um, com i completely yes there was but did you know one of the fields that had green waste produced a gold stayer yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, and 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 there was a three three status gold status found last year. Not all of them got documented because it was it was lost in translation and and you know uh, and we have didn't have felt managed to get you know. But there was a, an amazing um, Saxon. Um, it was like a it was almost like a a man, a big big man, and it was it's now being. I think it's being researched in the British Museum and it's 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 an amazing find. You know, there was Celtic coins, there was um, a couple of Saxon coins found, there was plenty of hammered, there was hundreds of Roman coins found, um, there was some gold sovereign, there was a gold guinea, uh, quite a lot was found over the course of the weekend. And you know, yeah, not everybody found, but that's metal detecting, isn't it? That's yeah. 
that's you pay your money, you, you take your chance sort of thing. You, we, the one thing I can't guarantee, there's two things I can't guarantee to people and that's they're going to find something and be the weather. Only him upstairs dictates that. Yeah. And I can put, we can find some decent land for you and we can put you on it. And there were some people going away from the Rodney Cook last year, happy as a pig in you know what. Because they found a company to do some decent things. But there were other people who hadn't found. But 99.9% .9 of the people who hadn't found were proper detectorists who knew the score. They know what it's like. They, they accept it. You know, you can't always find stuff. You, you, you turn left in a field or you turn right. And that dict could, can dictate if you find that amazing find or you don't. And we can't guarantee it. But we can put, there's 45 fields, 980 acres. So, you know, but what we can do, and the one thing I do have control of, is the fun aspect of the weekend. You know, we have live entertainment on Friday and Saturday night. We're going to make sure that we do that again this year. You know, we're going to make sure that everybody has, has, has a, a, a great marquee like we did last year. You know, a really good a stage, a, a decent raffle. You know, we the, the raffles are amazing that we have at the Rodney Cook. It's, it's fantastic. The, the, the generosity of the of the, of the of the metal detecting companies and manufacturers and the um, and, and, and the shops, you know, are, are second to none. I, I cannot thank enough the likes of all the metal detecting uh, metal detecting manufacturers and and the shops. They're an amazing bunch and so generous when they give the raffle prizes to us for yeah. you know for the course. And what we have got this year as well is a shower block. We have a shower block this year. Lady uh, of the light. Well, it's not. Unfortunately, Dave, um, it isn't a communal shower, mate, I'm afraid. It, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> There's a few ladies who mentioned last year that they would have liked to shower. I, I have heard. Yeah, so. Well, we have, we have listened to, 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 the, to, to the requests, and we have yeah. given you a shower block. Marvel. And the shower block is individual showers. So you've got your own cubicle. So you'll be locked and confined in your own personal shower. Uh, there's a sink. There's a, I think there's a, a wash basin um, and there's a seat in there and clothes hooks. So you can go in, wash your bits, get yourself nice and fresh. And then, you know, I don't think I've heard of a metal detecting rally uh, before where you've actually had a shower box. There will be a donation box next to the shower. And uh, we will be saying to people, just put in whatever you think a good shower is worth. Yeah. And um, it's, it's non it, you don't have to it's you don't have to do it but if somebody wants to say you know i think a good shower is worth a cut of quid then i'll put it in the pot but it's not compulsory it's just something we'll put there and obviously the money that goes that we make on on that goes to the pot um again you know there will be a licensed bar and, and everything else going on at the rodney cook this yeah. year that we had last year um we're hopefully got everything in place at the moment, um, the manufacturers are all starting to come on board. But obviously, it all depends on you know what. Um, and this will dictate everything come September. But if it doesn't happen this year, it doesn't happen. You know, safety. It will happen, it will happen one day, nonetheless. Safety is the paramount thing. Absolutely. And, and, and everybody's health. Um is see, you can see me wangling a CD in your face here. Now, one of our guests a couple of months ago was a gentleman, ah, my mind's gone blank, Ian Churchward, from the band, the legendary 10 Seconds. And listeners will remember he uh, he gave us permission to use some of his songs. One of them was called The Song of the Metal Detectorist. Now, he's uh, just released a new album on CD. Now, this is where I'm going, I guess, Gary. I'm thinking potential of um, uh, entertainment. They're basically mm. a band who uh, they are – how can you term it? They make songs related to history. And oh, okay. Think with modern music, but with a twist of – a little bit of folk in there, a little bit of rock in there, and what have you. Right, so, okay. you say this has just come today um, with a, with a letter thanking me for obviously supporting them and giving them a mention and what have you. But there you go. Oh, look yeah. at it. the green screen doesn't show up as you can see the green in it. 
So it's called uh, The Legendary 10 Seconds is the band, and it's called History Book Part 2. Song number one is actually Song of a Metal Detectorist. Now, normally, if we had Spreaker available, I'd actually play the songs. So, mm. uh, but you can go go away and uh, have a look on. But well, uh, we are. Um... For them. Uh, obviously, I could put you in communication for him. But, well, uh... we're looking, we are actually, at the moment, looking for an act uh, to come and do the Friday night. Yeah. Um, everybody would be happy to know that the band that we had last year on the saturday are returning because they were so brilliant they are typical my era they 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 effectively played hits of the indie hits of the 80s and 90s so we were all up and dancing as you know to the likes of depeche mode songs and um and all of that sort of stuff and uh, i think everybody can remember the dancing pinkachu like the last one you could probably <laughs> Um, he's actually made contact and he's apparently he's got a new onesie for this year's rally. So um, we're going to be waiting with bated breath to find out with, uh, who he's going to be this year. Um, but yeah, so we are actually looking for, um, for, 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 a, for an act for the Friday night. So if they're available and they want to come, then by all means. Well, you I'll know, put you um, in he's, not that, he's not that far as the crow flies. They're in Torquay. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's... Yes. Like, some of the some, was, uh, several other songs. One was called "The Jewel of Middleham." Now, if you remember the the Middleham Horde, um, yes. it's yeah. been in the news lately because the other parish wants the name instead of the Middleham one. They made the song about that as well. And also, if I just pull up uh, my Spreaker account because I've already got it loaded onto it, uh, the third song was called "Ooh uh, Driverless Cars." Which was also related to uh, metal detecting as well. So there's on quite a few songs related. Well, they they sound great for for a metal detecting rally, don't they? They're they do. Almost, they're almost uh, the, per the perfect act to have. And obviously, um, the, the names running along the bottom of the screen. You can go and find them on YouTube or they're, they're even on Spotify actually. So you can listen to them on Spotify. Yeah. Uh, Ray's put up the information. Um, can yeah, you thanks, Ray. Tell me That's now, brilliant. how many tickets do you know are still available? Well, we. Um, originally said that there would be 750 tickets uh, weekend tickets available this year with a further um 100 to 150 day tickets available um as it is at the moment we have sold the best part of 650 um so you really do need to be quick if you want to get on the rodney cook this year um you know we keep saying if it goes ahead but we're working on the on 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 the principle that come September, everything that's happening at the moment will have settled down and we will hold the rally. And I'm sure Mark at Detectable is, is, is working on the same principle. Um, we'll continue to run as if it's going ahead until we are told otherwise. So if you want to come, um, the tickets are still available. We can, we still got plenty of weekend tickets available. There is, uh, an opportunity where we might be able to increase the weekend numbers. We have got a couple of other big areas of fields nearby that we could possibly use that would allow us to increase the numbers. Um, but with the one thing that I don't want to do at, the, at, at Dad's Memorial Rally is overpopulate it. Um, you know, we have a we have a, a manageable amount of people that we can have, and with those people, we we we. We can raise a decent amount of money and people can be spread out in the fields without feeling as if they're confined in a tin of sardines. You know, as a metal detectorist myself, I know what I look for um, when I go to a metal detecting rally, you know, and being able to go into a field without 500 people all confined in a few hundred acres isn't the sort of thing that I enjoy. Um, so I've learned that as a detectorist and my all my fellow organisers are detectorists, that we know what we, we would want from a rally ourselves. So we try to install that at the Rodney Cook. So I don't want to overpopulate the rally. Um, you know, we've got probably the best part, again, of 850 to 950 acres this year of land, I think with all of it opened up. Um, but obviously that all depends on crops and, and whether all the crops are off at the, that particular moment in time. And obviously the weather dictates an awful lot of whether all the call, we over book the amount of land that we have to compensate for losses, obviously. Yeah. 
um, like we all have to do. Yeah. So, um, and what fantastic location do you have? Oh, the, the location this year is um, we. Everybody knows it's near Marlborough, and uh, it's not a million miles away from Marlborough. Uh, in fact, uh, if people, you know, want, we're telling people when they say, look, we don't want to camp, we want to stay over in a and b or a hotel. We're telling people anywhere near or in Marlborough is close enough to the rally. Um, in fact, I personally am staying um, in, um, in 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 the Premier Inn in Marlborough because I'm not a camper. Everybody knows that. I hate camping. I detest it. Um, each to their own, but I don't like camping. Um, so I'm staying in the Premier Inn in Marlborough, which is close enough to get to the site. The site itself is, is amazing. Uh, the history of the area speaks for itself. You only have to look up the history of, of Marlborough um, and you'll know what I mean. You, Marlborough had the Roman town of Kinetio uh, next to it. There's um, a couple of Roman roads running straight through the site. Um, and um, that's where they found the two very big pots of Roman coins that were more than Dave's hoard, but they were in two separate pots. Um, so you've got the Roman town of Canetia, Marlborough dates right back through the Roman period into the Celtic period. You've also got a stone's throw away from the site, the ancient stone monument of Avebury. Um, you know, um, you've also got Silbury Hill. Um, everybody who, who looks at the history of around Marlborough will see all of those landmarks um, in the area. So, you know, there's a Saxon uh, in Marlborough. It's it's all it's got very very Saxonized Saxon, ideas, Saxon uh, settlements as well within Marlborough itself. So it's a lot of history in the area, um, and the estate, the farm that we're on, uh, the the landowner has assured us they've never had a large club go on. They've never had a, 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 an organised dig on there. They've never had pay as you dig groups go on there. They have had. Um, uh, they did have a, a guy who used to do some metal detecting many years ago, um, who, who used to come and do the odd little bit. Uh, but this was a single detectorist, um, and the guy who owns it has owned it since the 80s, mm. so he's not had any big groups or any clubs or anything like that on the land. Um, he's assured us of that, and he's owned the land since the 80s. And at the end of the day, you can only go by what they what the farmers and the landowners tell you, yeah, can't you? Right, you yeah. know? You can guarantee that you haven't had the odd night hawker on the fields before because you don't know. But we, the one thing we try to do is we try to make sure that the land we're going on is going to give us at least a fighting chance of producing something. It doesn't always guarantee it. That's but we everybody who, who's been in the hobby long enough knows that. Uh, Ray, if it's possible, could you put up the? um information of how people can actually get tickets so we can put that up on the on the screen if possible. just email the email just the email address going across the bottom of the screen there if you want a ticket just email that and ask for the details that's, that's, all, that's all you that's all you've so got to do no normal booking system at other events no 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 we we have got a website being produced at the moment which we will have up and running hopefully very soon um but as it stands at the moment we're very old-fashioned at the rodney cook you just email that address there and request booking details and um, Lisa then will send you the booking the, the the booking email and you just follow the instructions on that and you're you're, you're booked in um, it's a ticketless obviously, event obviously so. any um, information forthcoming before uh, the event whatever it may be updates uh, yeah. um, potential cancellations we will exactly. support yeah. you 100% and get that information uh, to the masses via we'll, we'll put publish um, posts ourselves and we will share every all the information from yourself Gary yeah we, we exactly mate thank yeah you do and, and, and you're brilliant at that you really are and we we, we 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 at the Rodney Cook we are so grateful for what you guys do you know um Dave you and Luke in your support with the magazine that you produce for the rally and all of the stuff that you do running up to it with the advertising and everything else. The, there will be, speaking of advertising, there will be an advert running in the Treasure Hunting magazine between now and September. Um, Jules and Dan at the Treasure Hunting magazine support the Rodney Cook massively, and they help us with the advertising for the event. The event will also be obviously advertised in the Searcher Mag. Harry and her team at the Searcher Mag 
fully support the Rodney Cook rally as well. Um, and Harry is very generous with 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 her um, raffle prizes, just like the Treasure Hunting Magazine and Greenlight Publishing are. Um, and she supports, and her team of guys will always come to the Rodney Cook and um, and, and 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 support it that way. And there, she will be advertising it in in her magazine as well in the Searcher. Um, and great thank you to to her to, to Harry and to Dan um, at both magazines, you know, respectively. Um, so yeah, everything that you need to know about the Rodney Cook goes up on the Rodney Cook Facebook page. It's then shared around the Facebook groups. Um, so anyone who needs information, even if they're not on Facebook, can get it through the through the um, through the email. You just email us or message message us on Messenger, which I get a lot of. Um, you know. Ticket sales, as I said before, have gone through the roof. The support has been amazing, and it's six over six hundred. Best part, six hundred and fifty tickets have gone now, um, and they're still coming in. Even through this um, worrying times that we're in at the moment in, in in the world with with this virus, people are still booking. You know, we had two bookings today, two or three bookings today. I wasn't expecting any bookings at the moment because of the, the virus. People were thinking, well there's no point in booking because it's not going to be on um and it might not be yet you know um and it's like i, I want to reiterate what i said before just to put people's minds at rest if you have booked and paid and for some reason well we all know the reason if i have to pull the plug on this year's event your tickets will be valid for next year just like they've done it detectable and just like they've done at glastonbury the tickets will be validated for next year if you want to follow your tickets on for next year if you don't want to do that you're entitled to a full refund and we will refund everybody who decides that they can't think that far ahead and they will get a refund also on top of that if there is anybody out there and if the rally is going ahead and it continues to go ahead but if there is anybody out there who's a little bit worried and a little bit concerned about coming to, a, to to the rally because of the virus then make yourself known to us and if you want a refund we will give you a refund you know it is like i've said before this is a charity event it's not a business so anybody who wants a refund because of these unprecedented times that we're in you'll get one guys don't worry you know, we, you all know, you know us all at the Rodney Cook. We're not here to do anybody out of anything. We're only here to help people. So if it comes to it and you're in any way, shape or form concerned about coming to the rally, just tell us and we will give you a full refund. On top of that, we will obviously on site, we'll be promoting, if it goes ahead, we'll be promoting everything within what we can do to wash your hands we'll be putting hand sanitizer in, in and spread around the site there will be places where you can um you know you can go and wash your hands we're hoping to have hand every you know all the toilets that we're using have got their own hand wash basins in any way so we will promote you know we're hoping to get some hand washing stations set up as well so people will be able to to keep themselves clean obviously you've got the showers as well so you know you can go and scrub yourself down after after a long day in the field um so we will be promoting everything that we can um you know to to make sure that we do everything in our power to 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 to, to help people as i said before mate you know it's all hypothetical at the moment um it, it's out of my hands it's 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 out of anybody's hands we'll wait and see we're, we're too far ahead at the moment to make any decisions so we'll just wait and see what happens in the next in the coming months well, apologies for the bang then. I knocked something and my uh, my mixer fell off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gary, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on today. No, that's and, fine. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Dave. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to everybody who's been, who's been listening. And a, a massive thank yeah, you thank everyone, yeah. to everybody who helped yeah, me. You, you, give, you give out your thanks now. Yeah. You, you, uh, you said you were going to run up some, so you do yeah, that now. There's, the list is endless, to be fair. And I'll start with the very important people, the, the people who attend the event, the, the supporters of the event, the guys who pay their money and come to the event and support it for the last two years, weekenders and the last 
three or four week uh, day digs that we've had. You guys are simply incredible, and I love all of you dearly. I really do. I think you're all an amazing bunch of people, and your support never ceases to amaze me. And I know I keep saying it, guys, but you're 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 fantastic. Um, then I want to thank the anyone within the metal detecting fraternity who, who who comes and supports the event with raffle prizes, like the like all of the manufacturers. There's a all of them, XP metal detectors, my lab, Garrett, you know, Garrett this year are helping me, um, you know, Nocturne Macro, uh, Rutus metal detectors, C-scope metal detectors, you know, they're all coming in and helping, you know, um, Blackadder Spades, the guys at Blackadder, you know, fantastic group of people, and they're helping me out this year. You know, you've got the likes of Let's Go Digging, Paul Howard, they're helping me out this year. As I say, not many people have heard of Incubus Finance, but he's a metal detectorist who, who, who runs this. And he was so um, I, he was so moved with what we were doing at the Rodney Cook. He wanted to help in some way. And he, so he wanted to make a donation and, su and support us by, by you know, in, in, and he has done this year. Um, you know, the magazines, the Searcher and the Treasure Hunting magazine, you know, Harry and Dan, it, it, it's Searcher and the team, and, and a special huge thanks to Dan uh, Goldberg at, at Treasure Hunting magazine and the um, Greenlight Publishing, and to Jules Evan Hart, the editor. You know, I love you, Jules. I really do, pal. You're, you're a fantastic guy. And I, I love our conversations on the phone. We speak for hours on the phone, me and Jules. We really do. We, we put the world to right, literally, with nearly every time we speak so jules especially um you, you actually get to see him next week because he's he's next week's guest on well, here, well, so I'll, I'll, I'll come can, on and listen to him there. i'm sure he'll be an amazing he's an amazing guy jules and he's a great person to talk to um obviously um everyone who supports the rally uh pete Turrell at leisure promotions pete i love you fella um Nigel and Marcus Ingram at Redlands, guys, you two are fantastic and you are so generous and you're brilliant, brilliant, brilliant people. They're probably not even listening to this, but anyway, I'll thank them anyway. Um, they're, 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 they're incredible people. The NCMD, you, you come and support, um, you know, Roman Remains, who come and support us again, Phil at the cafe to you, the burger van people and and, and the bar and everything and, and everyone else who, who, who comes and then obviously the, the, the main group of Rodney Cook helpers you know my that my group of amazing guys and girls who give up so much of their time to help me you know my my best friend one of my best friends in the whole world Steve Murray um John Lydell Big John we call him he's got a heart of gold and I love you, John, with all my heart. Um, Paul Bancroft, for, he's, he's a trained paramedic. He was a, he was a paramedic, and he does all the driving around the, the, the farm and making sure everybody's okay. Obviously, Dave Crisp. Dave is 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 an amazing man, and he the most important person in the Rodney Cook, as far as I'm concerned, because without him, we none of us would even have a we all run, running around like eggless chickens if it weren't for Dave Crisp. My amazing wife Lisa, who I love dearly, who does all the booking in. And without her support, I would probably be a quivering wreck on the floor. Um, everybody else who helps me from the Trowbridge Metal Detecting Club, you guys are simply awesome, all of you. Ray Case does all the money booking in. Um, he and Lisa have this, you know, hidden telepathic ways of dealing with each other. And they, they're, they're great and they get on, you know, they, they, they do everything without me having to worry about it because I'm rubbish and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, there's a great guy called Neil, Neil Cleveland. He's a good friend of mine and he comes to the rally and he basically does everything he can to help me at the rally. And he's an amazing guy. Paul Norris comes all the way from Scotland, right out. In, uh, he lives basically as far up as you can go almost out of Hebrides type, type of place. And he comes all the way down and he wants to, he, he, rather than take, he wants to help Paul Norris, you know, and he, and he puts a yellow jacket on and he spends his whole weekend helping me. And, and, I, and I love him to bits and he's a great guy. Um, and I'm, I'm so sorry if I've missed anybody, but everybody at the club who helps me, um, you know, Sue and Jim and, and, and Alan and, 
lots and lots of other people who come and give up their time to help me um, are just great people. And as I say, anyone else who, who I've missed, I feel I, I, I'm, I'm truly sorry if I've missed your name. Um, you all are just amazing. Obviously, you, Dave and Luke, again, I thanked you before, but I can't thank you enough because without all of you and without all of the support from the people who come, the Rodney Cook rally would 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 never happen. And the charity people themselves, who we raise money for, they come and help us for the weekend. And also to all of the thousands of people who are suffering with cancer at the moment, um, and all of the thousands of people out there who we try to help, um, a massive thank you to you guys as well, because you are the real heroes of the Rodney Cook Rally. You guys who are going through this awful, awful disease, you guys are the real heroes. And this is what we do at the Rodney Cook Rally for you, for any of you, any of you guys out there who are listening tonight, who've, who've had some form of cancer yourselves, or you know someone who has, or you had a family member who has, you know what this bloody rally is all about. And that's what this pissing rally is all about. Sorry for swearing. It's about raising money for to stop this sick, evil disease from taking anybody else. Because I know the virus, the virus that we've got at the moment is terrible unbelievably bad and I and I and it pains me to think of the people suffering with it and the ones who died but what we also got to remember is when the BBC is saying 20 more people have died today of coronavirus what you've got to also remember is there's probably a few hundred people in the UK who've also died of cancer today as well and it's that's been happening every day for weeks for months for years it's an evil disease and the sooner we can get rid of it and, and dispose of it, the better. And it took my dad and it took Lisa's uncle and it took my auntie. And I'm sure there's lots of you out there who is taking it. And your mum. And that's the emotional thing about this rally. And it makes us all think about our, our loved ones that we've lost. And not just to cancer, to other things. And that is what I try to install, David. I know I rub it on and I know I go on a bit. And I know people sometimes say, oh, Cookie, will you just shut up? But no, I won't. Not about this, because I'm so passionate about it and I want us all to come together and do it. And if we all do it together, we can smash last year's towel. And I'm hoping, pray to, to whatever God you believe in is the one great Dave Allen once said. Pray to whatever God you believe in. And I hope he goes with you. And I hope that the rally does go ahead because it will give us a chance to beat last year's target and raise as much money as we can to get rid of this sick, evil disease as quickly and as possible. And that's all I want to say, really. Huge thank you to everybody. I, 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 as, as, as Steve Murray would say, Gary, fuck up. <laughs> well, Gary, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you tonight. Um, you too, mate. To end the show, I start with the parish notices. Uh, but as I was trying to get everything running, obviously, I, I missed a lot out. So um, a few updates. Uh, the Simplex are releasing an update, a digital update for the, the machine. Sorry, Dr. Macro are releasing a Simplex update. Um, NCMD, please remember to renew your uh, membership, which is uh, due on the 1st of April. If you fancy writing for the Archaeology and Metal Detective magazine, even if it's just a, an image of something you, you've about, the, um, contact me at the email running along the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you also fancy being a guest or you know someone who's a guest, people keep asking me, Perry, but he said no. Uh, but if you fancy being a guest, give me a shout. As I said, next week we've got Mr. Julian Evan Hart, which uh, I'm looking forward to immensely. The Rodney Cook Memorial is the September. Uh, Detectacom, which is still going ahead, which is a North of Tyne rally uh, group. It's the 25th and 26th of July. And Detectable, currently still obviously ongoing, is the 12th and 13th of September. Uh, thank you again to Graham Dempsey for his prizes last week's competition, which were run, won by Marcus Maximus and Deb Dunn Johnston. Uh, Marcus Maximus came onto the big metal detecting podcast 
page and thanked him personally and uh, showed he got the thing. And I'm hoping they enjoy them and able to as have as much success as everybody else is. So, uh, again, Gary, it's here. Uh, can't thank you enough. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's actually me on. All metal mode. It's it both more all metal mode and big metal detective podcast. It is the longest show I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it would be with me on. Everybody is saying that. Trust me. <laughs> no, but honestly, you know, <laughs> I'm not, sometimes in the past on some shows I've been like, oh, but you know, you have to carry on. You have to, you know, it's 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 what we love. What what I love to do. Um, do you know, I fell into this accidentally. We we done a, a broadcast for All Metal Mode UK. Uh, sorry, the All Metal Mode at the time at Detectable 2018. And Mike said to Luke, do you think David come on in the future as a, a guest host? So, which I did. Mike, unfortunately, had to stop doing the, the All Metal Mode UK podcast. So me and Luke discussed it. And, you know, it, this isn't about fame. This isn't about fortune or anything like that. It, it's something where we can get, get to people like yourself, like to Julian, like to Mark, and, and talk about things that they want to talk about. And obviously people well, like to listen. I might not be brilliant at what I do. I don't think I'm at all. But sadly, I am the person who, who is uh, hosting and, and able to talk. I haven't got a clue. If you show me a find, I haven't got a clue. But I'm able to talk about it and let you describe what you it is. Great, so, uh, you do a great job, mate. And I know I have a reputation for rabbiting on. And I hold, <laughs> I hold my hands up to that. And, and, and that's probably, as I said before, why I'm quite good at sales. And um, everybody who knows me is saying, the work, we love you to bits, guys, but you do go on a hell of a lot. And everybody who knows you wouldn't have you any other way, mate. Even Lisa says, <laughs> will you just shut up? Um, and I know I can, and I rabbit on quite a bit. And, and oh, it's, been, it's been fantastic. I, it's, 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 that's just me, and I'm very passionate about the hobby, and I'm very passionate about my friends, and I'm very passionate about the rally. And you, you can just turn me off if you want. Put me on mute. It's probably worse better. Well, as, as you've seen, um, we've had multiple comments uh, about the show tonight. Uh, you know, one from Ray that I've left on there. A very emotional and nice show tonight. Well done, guys. Good luck for the RCM rally. So hmm. on, that note, Gary, on that note, I will end the show. As I hmm. say, next week we've got Julian Evan Art. I will try my damnedest because I'm off work to fix the issues with the, uh, the, the, the podcast. Don't forget, we will be coming live at a special 15 minutes or so broadcast on Sunday night with Mark Betcher. So he's able to discuss with you um face to face everything that's gone on with the postponement and cancellation of the detectable uh, detectable events ladies and gentlemen it's been an absolute pleasure gary love you thank you very much take care i love you all guys thank you so much for all your support take Take care care. everybody and i'll end the broadcast if i can see how take care take care bye